right now at 7. It's time to bundle up. Get ready for one of the coldest nights this season. In spots, it'll be below freezing, but look at the winds. A Bay Area deputy ambushed what he was wearing that likely saved his life. He displayed exemplary courage while being fired at. Coronavirus patients on the move. The storm damage that forced two of them to be transferred to a San Francisco hospital. Plus a dramatic ending after a terrifying and deadly shooting inside a Greyhound bus. Due to some very heroic acts by the passengers, they were able to overcome this subject and disarm him. The 49ers, that may not be on next year's roster. Their tough flight home after the Super Bowl loss and the fans still faithful tonight. Keep your hands up, boys. Keep your hands up. You rock. Right now on the KPIX 5 News at 7 and streaming on CBS N Bay Area, a beautiful sunset tonight leading to a very cold night ahead. And good evening, I'm Ken Bastida. And I'm Elizabeth Cook. A live look at San Francisco. Our Salesforce cameras have been bouncing around a little bit. Along with the cold, there are some gusty winds out there tonight. Let's get right to Brian Hackney for the very latest. Hey, Brian. Yeah, if the winds are gusty enough, it's not going to get that cold. But at the moment, there are freeze warnings posted up in the North Bay, in the wine country, and in all of the valleys for sub-freezing temperatures. Be done in the mid-20s and low-30s tonight. Specifically, Santa Rosa forecast to be down to 29, Napa 31. It'll be below freezing in Concord and in Livermore. San Jose will nudge just a degree above freezing at 33 degrees. But if the high pressure building offshore coupled with the inside slider low, if those winds produced by that situation stay high enough, and you know they've been breezy all day, then it probably won't get quite as cold as forecast. And at this hour, they're still blowing up to 20 miles an hour in parts of the Bay Area, so it bears watching. But in the meantime, the winds calm down, the temperatures will follow suit, and we'll have more details in the forecast in just a few minutes. But first, let's get the latest. Here's Liz. All right, Brian, thank you. In our campaign 2020 coverage, right now, caucus goers are gathering at nearly 1,700 centers all over Iowa. This is a live look at Liberty High School, one of those locations. Another site is this sports arena at Drake University. Tonight, voters are tallying support for their preferred candidates and by the end of the night we should know which candidate or candidates have scored the first points in the race for the Democratic presidential nomination. Now on the Republican side no surprise here President Trump is the winner of course he wasn't facing any opposition but based on entrance polling CBS News is estimating a four-way race between Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, Pete Buttigieg and Elizabeth Warren. Well, right now, UCSF is treating two patients with the coronavirus. A husband and wife are from San Benito County and are among 11 confirmed cases here in the U.S. KPIX 5's Andrea Borba live in San Francisco with what we've learned about this couple. Andrea? Well, Ken, just about a few hours ago, UCSF confirmed that they, in fact, were treating these patients when their hometown hospital simply was not up to the task. Pulmonary and infectious disease doctors at a UCSF hospital are treating a couple from Hollister who were transported last night with worsening novel coronavirus. The cases were confirmed by San Benito County officials Sunday. He was screened at the airport per the quarantine rules at the time and was found to be totally healthy and asymptomatic. The 57-year-old man was on a trip to China and spent one day during that trip in Wuhan, the epicenter of the novel coronavirus outbreak. He flew from China back to SFO on January 24th. The next morning, he woke up with a fever and other symptoms. Five days later, his wife also became ill. The couple lives in Hollister, but couldn't be treated at Hazel Hawkins Memorial Hospital because the ICU there was damaged in a December storm. In a statement, UCSF confirms two patients are now in their care in isolation. In addition to our standard infectious disease protocols, we have instituted a number of measures to screen patients with potential 2019 NCOV, as well as prevent the coronavirus's spread. Now, military bases across the country are also gearing up to potentially take patients who need to go into quarantine. At this point, Travis Air Force Base in Solano County is one of those. Ken, Elizabeth? 
Yeah, thanks, Andrea. UC's study abroad semester programs in China have all been halted because of this virus. The suspension impacts about 50 students across all UC campuses. A UC spokesperson says it is pulling the plug because of the U.S. State Department's warning against travel to China. And we invite you to stay with KPIX 5 for continuing coverage of the coronavirus situation. We will have all the developments right here on KPIX.com and streaming on CBSN Bay Area. A Santa Clara County deputy ambushed while on patrol alone. Tonight, we learned a piece of his equipment likely saved his life. The deputy was on routine patrol near the Uvis Reservoir in Morgan Hill Friday night. When he says a car pulled up, the headlights suddenly turned off and then someone or multiple people opened fire. The deputy was shot in the chest, but the bullet hit his body camera. He was able to return fire, but the suspect or suspects got away. It's unknown if they were hit. The sheriff says that the deputy is a practicing sick and wears a traditional headdress on duty, but it's still too early to say if that made him a target. It is unknown whether it's a hate crime or uh, just a crime of opportunity against uh, law enforcement. He displayed exemplary courage um, while, while being fired at. And actually, this was an ambush. The suspect or suspects is are facing charges of premeditated murder on a law enforcement officer. The deputy believes the suspects sped away in a silver 2000 sedan, possibly a Honda. Heroic stories emerging tonight after a passenger opens fire on a Greyhound bus ride from L.A. to San Francisco. A woman was killed there. Five other people injured in that bus when the man started shooting along Interstate 5 in the Grapevine about 1.30 this morning. The bus driver pulled over immediately. One passenger called 911 while others worked to take down the suspect and disarm him. They volunt he voluntarily left the bus and was later taken into custody. Officers say that there is no evidence the shooter knew any of the victims. Due to some very heroic acts by the passengers, they were able to overcome this subject and disarm him. They were able to escort him off of the bus. We are still trying to establish a, a motive. A difficult day back for high school students at Deer Valley High School in Antioch after one of their classmates was shot and killed. Police say 16-year-old sophomore Jonathan Parker was shot in the parking lot Friday night when a fight broke out between a group of teens after the basketball game. There's no details yet on who exactly pulled the trigger. A memorial is growing at the school where grief counselors and police were on hand today. You can tell when you go on campus that something is shifted. Like everyone, it seems empty even though everyone is here. I'm hurt by it, a lot of my other friends are hurt by it, and he shouldn't have died that day. The school district released a statement saying in part, quote, our children must be taught that solving disagreements with violence is not the answer. Both 49ers and Chiefs are both back home tonight. The mood much brighter in Kansas City, as you can imagine. The uh, Niners, uh, well, not hanging their heads, but feeling it after blowing a 10-point lead last night. Andrea Nakano is here now with what's next for the 49ers after really what was a stellar season. It was a great season, yeah. yeah. But there will be a parade on Wednesday. Unfortunately, that one's going to be in Kansas City. Despite Sunday's loss, it was still a season to remember for the 49er faithful. Got out of school early today, yes, <laughs> for this, just to welcome them back. Go Niners. Got to support the team. They've been awesome. They brought back the spirit, saved me as a fan. Keep your hands up, boys. Keep your hands up. You rock. All the way, baby. Niners, all the way. Well, not quite the heroes welcome the 49ers were hoping for today, but a handful of fans were there to greet them this afternoon. Instead, Jimmy G and the 49ers are left to turn the page after letting a 10 point lead slip away in the fourth quarter on Sunday. You can see it in guys' eyes in there. It, it means something to guys. And uh, you know, it means you got guys who care about what they're doing, guys who care about each other. And uh, you know, we're a young team, got a, got a very bright future. So. Um, you know, got to take this in stride, remember this feeling, and, you know, let it fuel us in the, in the offseason.
Yeah, is it September yet? Well, San Francisco has 14 unrestricted free agents this offseason. The big three are receiver Emmanuel Sanders, Eric Armstead, who led the team with 10 sacks, and free safety Jimmy Ward. They'll also pick outside the top 10 in the draft for the first time since 2015. So that shows you how bad this team was for so many years. Yeah. And now... Yeah, no pick up. Not gonna be able later. to depend on any draft picks this year, but well, uh, maybe you some know, trades. You might right. find a gem in the third round. Could Who be. knows? Could Who be. Knows? <laughs> Let's hope. Let's hope. Thanks, Andrea. Up next, the halftime show still has people talking tonight. Was it inappropriate? You be the judge. And it's a very good list to be on. Why one Bay Area location took the top spot when it comes to giving children the best chance for success. How do we double down on what we've been doing so we really get every kid across the finish line? And the proposed ballot measure in the Bay Area aimed at helping the housing crisis. But who will be paying the price? Plus, there is no rain in our forecast. So why is Caltrans concerned about extra water building up on some Bay Area freeways? And don't forget, we're streaming now on CBSN Bay Area. You can find us on KPIX.com, the CBS News app, or your favorite platform. Concerns tonight about groundwater seeping up onto Highway 101, creating dangerous puddles for drivers in San Jose. Yeah, Caltrans has been working on both short and long-term solutions for these puddles, but after recent rains, there's been more water than ever. The section of freeway actually goes below grade for about a mile, and then it's right above an underground aquifer that's brimming. It's too much danger. You know, to have running water like that on a freeway on nights like this where water is supposed to freeze up, it can cause a lot of havoc. Caltrans says it's not worried about ice because the water is flowing, it's moving, and temperatures won't be that cold there, but it will be placing electronic signs to warn drivers. Well, we see the water, but we need the rain, so it's a little bit of a tease yeah, I there. Don't, I don't remember that part of the 101 ever flooding like that. You know what's weird is there have been a couple of stories lately of old wells in the Santa Clara Valley starting to come up because groundwater has been recharging. Well, that's, that's what they did to uh, irrigate all those crops yeah. once upon a time. Yeah. But still that much groundwater and, and uh, well, ice or not, it's dangerous to yeah. hit that stuff. Absolutely. Sure. Well, we certainly won't have rain as a problem for the next seven days in that part of the Bay Area because there is none in the extended. Cold weather is the headline tonight. As we overlook the city of San Francisco, the highs today mostly in the 50s. Santa Rosa at 59 degrees, San Francisco at 55, and Fremont 53 degrees. Overnight lows tonight. That's the story. Uh, as we mentioned, Santa Rosa will be down to 29 degrees in Napa, 31, and in Livermore, just below freezing tonight. And in San Jose, it will be 33 for an overnight low. If the winds continue to mix out uh, the upper atmosphere and take it down to the surface, then things will not get that cold tonight. And it does look as if the winds are going to maintain right through sunrise tomorrow. And I, it's counterintuitive. You think you go out in the wind and it's freezing. And it was today. And the winds were blowing and the temperatures were low. But you know, above the ground, a few hundred feet above the ground, the air is warmer at night. So if you get winds, it'll take that warmer air, take it down to the surface, and the surface lows won't be that low. It'll be plenty chilly anyway. Winds ushered along by that high pressure offshore, and as that high begins to build, the winds will pick up, and uh, we will begin to warm up, too, by Wednesday. In the meantime, we need the rain, and we're not going to get it, not in the near future. Santa Rosa three-quarters average, but in San Jose, just half of the rainfall we usually get by this point in the season. So tonight, it'll be clear and cold overnight. There are freeze warnings posted. Get off to a chilly start tomorrow morning. I don't want to bundle up, but the visibilities are fantastic. Clear skies, sunny and cool, and then we'll be near 70 degrees by Friday. But first things first, forecast highs for tomorrow. Find them close to but slightly below seasonal averages. In San Francisco tomorrow, 56. Same for Concord, San Jose, and the ballpark in 56 at Oakland as well. Plenty of sunshine, not much in fog formation with those winds blowing. Sunnyvale will be down to or up to 57 tomorrow. Mid 50s for the South Bay. Milpitas at 56 degrees and in San Jose 57. Over in the East Bay, a chilly night tonight. Some places dipping below freezing and then they recover into the mid 50s with Concord at 56, Dublin 56 and Livermore 55 degrees. Up in the North Bay, plenty of sunshine. Again, great visibilities and about 59 at Santa Rosa, 58 at Petaluma. 
And as we get toward Ukiah in Lakeport in beautiful Windsor, 60 degrees for a forecast high. In the extended forecast, we're going to be seeing uh, temperatures beginning to warm by the time we get to Wednesday. Will be 62, 65 on Thursday. Look at Friday, near 70 degrees, just like last Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday will begin to cool it off, but um, computer models are just not suggesting even a hint of rain in the next seven days. That's weather for the latest in the headlines. Here's Liz. Thank you, Brian. Well, here's what you missed if you're just getting home right now. Senators have begun deliberations in President Trump's impeachment trial. Closing arguments wrapped up today, nearly a month and a half after the House voted to impeach the president on charges of abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. The GOP-controlled Senate is expected to take a final vote Wednesday to acquit the president on both articles. We must say enough. He has betrayed our national security, and he will do so again. He has compromised our elections, and he will do so again. I cannot vote to convict. The Constitution provides for impeachment, but does not demand it in all instances. There's a lot of back and forth going on about a proposed property tax in San Jose. Measure E would impose a tax on properties worth more than $2 million. If it passes, it could raise millions of dollars for low-income housing, but critics say there is a catch. They promise to spend it on low-income housing. You buy that? Well, maybe these elected officials in the next couple of years, but the mayor is going to be out of office two years from now, and, and, and this money can be spent by any council any way they like because it's a general fund tax. Jennifer Lopez and Shakira took the stage for the Super Bowl halftime show last night, sending social media buzzing. The performance sparked the debate. Is it empowering or objectifying? Our viewers have been weighing in. Some said it was overly sexual, not family friendly. Others wrote it was great. And one viewer pointing out no one said a thing about an overly sexual or inappropriate performance last year when Adam Levine took his shirt off during his halftime performance. Ken. All right, thanks, Elizabeth. The new bill at the state capitol that could radically transform PG&E. And some other news on the utility that sent stocks soaring double digits today. The people come here tend to be like more inclined to study and more worried about education. Plus, the Bay Area city that landed at the top in a new ranking of the best places to raise kids. Plus. We have all heard of drug or bomb sniffing dogs, but why are they now being used at some Bay Area wineries? A bill that would turn PG&E into a public utility is making its way through the state capitol tonight. Yeah, San Francisco State Senator Scott Weiner introduced the legislation as part of a larger package of bills aimed at holding PG&E accountable. PG&E filed for bankruptcy last year, facing billions of dollars in liabilities from wildfires blamed on its equipment. Well, today PG&E filed a revamped plan to emerge from Chapter 11, and that sent the company's stock surging 13.5% straight up. The plan still needs approval from the governor. The Bay Area's biggest city was just named one of the best areas in the entire country to raise a child. San Jose came in number two on the study out of the Brandeis University. The Child Opportunity Index measured communities based on poverty and employment rates, high school graduation, and the quality of schools. San Jose was narrowly edged out by Madison, Wisconsin for the top spot. Because of the technology and all the companies there, the people come here tend to be like more inclined to study and more worried about education so I think that helped. One of the opportunities or sort of challenges that we face is taking this relatively good news and saying to ourselves how do we double down on what we've been doing so we really get every kid across the finish line. The study's authors acknowledge that even in places of high opportunity there are pockets of poverty. A Santa Clara County supervisor says those are the places where we must focus our efforts. Coming up next, the furry new workers just hired at some Bay Area wineries.
Now, these are former drug sniffing dogs from Chile and are now being used to find bad wine in Sonoma County. They can detect chemicals in the wood of the barrels and the corks that can end up contaminating and ruining the wine. One of the benefits with the dogs is that the dogs not only going to tell you that there is something wrong, but they're going to point you exactly where, uh, the, where, it the, is. where is it coming from. The barrel maker, T.N. Cooper, is now using them to find out what wine might be bad. The owner says he has other wineries asking if the dogs can help them, too. Uh, they are just amazing. Cool. Thank you for watching at 7. The news continues streaming on CBSN Bay Area. And we'll be back here at 11 o'clock with more for you. Good night.